Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to do um, some power stuff. But first we're going to upgrade the seed reprocessor, which is just behind me. I've moved stuff around in the base because I was getting a bit cluttered. Anyway, let's get started. So here's the seed reprocessor. Let's just break that. And press C because I've got my magnet off. Um, C is the button I use for, for um, collecting stuff using that tr lost trinket trinket. So there we go. So we've just put basically one Inferium Essence, one in block of Inferium. That's just nine Essence in a sort of standard block pattern. Inferium Ingots, the recipe for those are basically Prosperity with two Inferium. We've seen this all before, I think. Pretty sure about that. And that will make the uh, Inferium. So it now has a sort of speed difference. So that's twen That uses 20. Fuel is 20 per tick. Operation speed is 200, so, and fuel capacity, it doesn't really matter about the fuel capacity. So this one is twice as much, but the operation speed is twice as fast. So this is just basically exactly the same fuel usage, but just twice as fast. Next one in. So this time we've got three times as much fuel. Um, actually, it's not, as, it's not as efficient in terms of fuel usage, this particular Prudentium version. Next is the Tertium version, which is now got 55 and 100. I think that's getting decent. I think that's getting decent. Anyway, the last one of these I'm going to do today is the uh, Imperium version. And I think we start to get some fuel savings at this one. Fuel usage is now 320. Uh, and it uses, operation is 20 per tick. So it's 10 times faster. And uses a little bit more fuel. I've actually made a slight mistake because I need to break this block. Hit like this, and then put on top of this the CD processor, but we'll put, yeah, I need to put it on first before I can put the wrench down. Don't I? So let's just wait here. I didn't, I didn't recognise it's blue. <laughs> so there we are. So if we come down here with the wrench and press Shift, we should be able to right-click that. So yes, no upgrade. Trans, transferring items four per second, which is fine, I think, for this process. If not, I just put an upgrade in it, and there we are. So now I'll put the fuel in here. And when I pre-process foods, they'll be a lot faster. I didn't show you that, but. They are painfully slow in the standard one. In fact, I should have some seeds up here. Let's just take some seeds up here. Got some charcoal, so let's take this. Let's put the charcoal in as, while it's charging up and then put these seeds in it. Now you can see that they are do, going pretty reasonably fast. Well, pretty fast. You should have seen it before. It was 10 times longer, <laughs> as I said before, right? 6.59, I can put the rest of those in there. That process, and they're, they're going to end up in this, actually going to end up in this chest here. Uh, as you can see, coming through reasonably fast. Uh, the Supreme one is really good. Now, next thing. Actually, I would actually like to do this. This is the uh, recipe for an end stone smelter from Better End Forge. It's very straightforward. This is just Thelesium ingots. The recipe for Thelesium ingots basically blast furnace in one of these blocks. But the uses of the block here were two. You get hard, you get you need something more powerful. You can use blaze rods, blocks of coal, or blocks of charcoal. I think, and maybe just blocks of coal we can use. You're limited to the fuel, look at the lava, blaze rods, and blocks of coal. So, and that'll produce three. Let's take one of these. And here was just a recipe to make a uh, grout because I was doing some work with the in the nether for producing that grout smelter. This one here is the recipe, is basically the stuff that we need to upgrade me mechanism. So let's have a look at this. I have got already some basic factories built, but here we've got the metallurgic infusers. Let's just break this one here. And then put this into this pattern. And we should then get a basic factory, which then gives you three items in a row. So that's it. But all the basic factories are exactly the same. Basic control circuits, which is redstone and osmine in the metallurgic infuser. Stone and iron's fairly obvious. So then we've got this basic infusion uh, factory. It uses more power, so that's why we're looking at power. Quite, imp it's quite important actually. I think power. So, well. so now we have a look at the interface on this. You can see that we've got three slots instead of one slot. So you just basically put your, your fuel into here, whatever you're going to put into here, and then it'll produce. It can do three at a time, which is great. I think the most you can do is the ultimate one. We have actually got an ultimate compressor which has limited use and this has what nine 
slots. So it's very, it's a lot fa it's a considerably faster. It uses considerably more power. Now, I was going to I wasn't going to do this today, but let's just do this. This is the Wyvern. This is the Wyvern bow. I want to do it because I want to play with it a little bit. See how it, what what's the best way to do it. So this is all the standard stuff except for these basic energy relays and this Wyvern energy controller. The recipe for that, if I can see the recipe, let's look at this. Um, so if I have a look at this, so we should be able to see the wyvern energy con control as this one. And all it is is a draconium core, which we've done before. Blocks of redstone and draconium which will produce one of these. The crystals, on the other hand, um, I don't see them in this bit. Let's just remove those and just make crystal in here. We have these crystals. We need these basic energy relays. So those using the Wyvern energy controller. So we make two of those and they put four diamonds and makes four of these basics, which is great because they'll be only using two in this recipe. So let's craft this up. And it should work, I hope. I'm just checking I've actually got enough. Oh, it doesn't look like it's charging. Yeah, maybe I haven't set it up yet because I did come down here and I have, oh, I haven't set it up yet. See, here I've got the uh, ultimate energy core. I made a second ultimate energy core here. So let's right click that. Now it should start to charge up. But it'll probably charge it fairly slowly if it's going to charge up at all. No, it's not charging at all because I need to set the output on this to the bottom face. So let's do that as well. So sides. So at the moment, the, the output's on the front. So we need to make it on the bottom here. So let's just left click that like that. And you can hear it starting to run, which means that this should be running up here now. Let's just have a look. Yeah, it's charging up. But as you see, it's charging up very slowly. The way to solve that, because we've got plenty of power, is come over here and get one of these upgrades. So we've got these uh, ultimate pipe upgrades here. And this increases the speed of the energy flow significantly. <laughs> I haven't demonstrated this before. I have done it, but I didn't demonstrate it. So all you need to do is right click this and then put it in and it works for all sorts of things. It tells you now it's transferring a lot more and it's starting to spark as you can see. It's already done it so now it's crafting it and it will have the bow very soon. Uh, I wanted to fill this in but I'll do that another time. And then we have our wife and bow. Fantastic. So it needs energy to function so we need to charge it up. So I guess that we can put that into one of these. If I shift click it in. Oh, uh, maybe I need to charge it up with... No, it doesn't work in there. Maybe we need to charge it up. See, if the shift plus... Is it shift plus? I'm not sure what the key is, to be honest with you. Shift, right-click it. So I guess it's shift plus right-clicking it. No. I'll look at that later on. So this isn't going to work until I've got some power into it. So let's get on with power. Power's neat. I like power. It's got some good features in it. So here we have the recipe for the... I've upgraded these now. These are nitro capacitors, uh, which I made from the seed. I made a seed last time. So we get 36 of these, 9 times 4, 36, which is what we need to make a reactor. And you see it's marking down a shape here. We'll have a look at that in a second. So what we the nitro chip, um, capacitor was this one here. So I've already got another 21 of those, so that means another 16, 32 crystals, I think. Yeah, 22. So that comes up quite well. So let's go up here. I think, is it just coming up to daytime? It's probably just coming up to daytime, yes. So here I've got the spit set out for where we want to do this stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the, have this in my hand, the nitro reactor in my hand like this. And then right click it down here. Just right click it, it'll actually build itself. Let's just step back a bit. And it's quite neat. It doesn't do it, it's sort of random in the order it puts the blocks down. But as soon as it's finished like that, it actually has this interface. So this is the interface. So in here, I've got some materials that we need. So we obviously need fuel. Uh, actually, we also need some coolant. There's two types of coolant that we're going to use. Oops, wrong one. That's out of the way. We're going to use either blue ice or we're going to use water. And I'm not sure if we can use both. In this energy capacity here, we have enough energy. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, oh, yes, I'm going to change this. At the moment, if I put one item in here, if I put items in here like this, it'll drop one item down because this is emitting a redstone signal of one. Okay, let me just take those out now. Now, if there's two items here, it actually emits a redstone signal of two, which is really cool because that, that basically means is what we can do is this. We can move this repeater along here. We'll leave the, this as the same position as it was before. Remove this one. And then we just put the repeater down here. And then the redstone dust down here. And then that was now emitting a power of one. So this is not active. So if I then put... Actually, I should first of all look at the use of the blue ice. That would be sensible. In the energizing, two blue ice produces a dry ice from power. So we can now simply put shift click those into there. And then it's going to fill this up. And then the drop, ice is going to drop down here into this chest, as you see. Good old hopper principles. So that's that's how that works. So that he works quite nicely for multiple items. Uh, one and two seem to be like the common ones. Now here we haven't connected in to the reactor with this with this particular bit. Um, so what I want to do is I want to just break it. Um, but we actually need to do other stuff in the reactor. So here it does it tell me? It does tell me in the book. I'll set the auto mode on so it stops when it's full and then starts again when it's less than 70%. So let's have a look at the book for reactor. I've got it here with me, I'm pretty sure. No, I haven't. I'll just go back and get it and I'll also go and get at the same time the wrench. So here's the wrench, here's the book, I mean. So here's reactors. And you can have a look at all of these things, really quite neat. Um, so the reactors are multi block. FE generator, uh, multiple FE generator that uses uranite as the main fuel. To build it, you need 36 reactor blocks, which you've already done. You place it in the hand and then you build the structure. So it completes itself automatically. That's correct. We've seen that so far. And then you need to put some stuff into it so that it heats up, causing fuel to be used up faster, generating less FE. So you need to keep it cool. So cool it down with a coolant like water. You can also use a solid coolant like snow or ice for extra coldness. A solid coolant requires liquid coolant to work. Okay, fantastic. Keep the reactor buffer full with full of fuel for better production, okay? So carbon materials like wood and coal, coal and wood. Oops, I'm just, I just pressed escape, tiny or something. So carbon materials like coal, wood, etc. will improve the fuel efficiency and add 180 degrees C of heat. Redstone will speed up the production and the fuel consumption will add 120 degrees C. The reactor will stop when it's full and start when it's less than 70% of its energy if the auto mode is on. So that's, that's the description of it. So we need to get some water into this. I'm just wondering, did I not bring my I've made an aqueous accumulator. I haven't brought it with me. So right, I'll have to go and get an aqueous accumulator. I'll do that. Uh, first of all, just link this into here so we make sure all of the ice is, is done. If it's not already finished. No, it's already finished. So with the wrench here, it should have... If I right-click this, do I have to shift right-click it? Or is that going to break the pipe? Or maybe it has a different mode. This is mode link. Oh, that's right, mode link. That should work then. I'm not sure how this works to be dead on because I've not used it before. I have to click this one. Looks like it should be linking in, shouldn't it? What other modes has it got in here? Rotate, no. Configure. It doesn't look like it's connecting it. So what we'll do is simply break the, this cable. Like that, and then put it back down again. And then this time it should have linked in, as you can see. So the power in this should now be, should now fill up. Oh, it won't fill up until we've turned it on, of course. But we can start off by putting some redstone and some coal in here. So I've got redstone, coal, and some fuel. Um, so I'll put the redstone and the coal in, leave the fuel to later on. So we, the fuel goes automatically into here. And then the solid fuel, like the ice, goes into here. Let's put that into here. 64 blocks of dry ice 
No, I'm clicking it there. So let's just go down and get um, some an aqueous accumulator. I'll see you in a second when I've got that. Actually, it was on the side. It was already prepared on the, in the table beside it. So what we need to do, the aqueous accumulator needs water spaces around it. So we can either put it on the edge here. Might be a good idea. Let's just put it on the edge. And then it fills up. doesn't need power, as we've already noticed. And I'll use these ultimate universal pipes because they basically transfer both fluid and energy and whatever else so we can put items into here as well so for example so we just need to shift right click the end of this so it's going to transfer water into the reactor so look at the reactor now so it's got water cool and it just hasn't got power so let's shift some power in it and as you can see the fuel is going usage is going down but it's starting to generate power. So it's generating 87,000 Fe per tick. Well, that's fairly reasonable. At least we should have solved some of our fuel problems for a while. <laughs> this, yeah, let's check the, so the, everything is full, don't need to worry about anything. And as soon as it fills up, this is also going to fill it with power, which it already has done. Fantastic. Right, next thing. Actually, I've got some more bits and pieces. I didn't want to, they were on the table beside it. I don't know why I didn't pick them up. Sorted. What I can do is, of course, put a chest on here. Actually, do let's do that. In fact, let's, well, I haven't actually done this yet. Let's break this. You'll notice it's uh, it didn't drop its stuff because it's got inside it. So let's just put this here on the edge of this, like that. It's got a it's got a, a shulker upgrade, so it doesn't drop its items when you break it. We should be able to simply shift right click these onto that like that and then have a look in here. Everything is now 64 except for dry ice because we haven't got some so, so of those. That's fantastic, right? Everything's automated as much as we need to except for dry ice. We need to sort that out. Dry ice, I have been making over here, and maybe I just can't remember if I showed you this last time or not. But here I've got a tank of water. Tank of water is now being fed from another aqueous accumulator over here. The tank of water is actually linked to both the, the standard temperature. So this is normal, does it show me? This is no temperature setting, but that's over a uh, respawn anchor, which is four times faster, I think. And here we've got dry ice, which makes the cooling run very fast as well. In here, I've got almost two stacks. So we're just going to run it again. So now we select the recipe we want to do, which is this one run it and that's going to make more ice this this chest has got a compacting upgrade in it so it will automatically when it gets to nine compact this from ice to packed ice and then when it's got another nine of those it'll come of the packed ice it'll make blue ice and then two blue ice together will then produce I just watch it I think you know I can't remember whether I've seen this or not showing you this before so now this is packed ice as you can see and the next one is ice so that's how that works Right, let's go on power. It's got some neat things in power. It's got, I've already built, some of these bits we've got out as rewards. For example, we've got these energy hoppers. We've got, I think I've got a starter. Well, I've upgraded one of these to blazing. blazing. If you look at these, the starter, some of these machine things you can upgrade like this one. So this is the starter one, which will then produce the, the basic one. The uses of the basic one with um, almost the same stuff, but just hardened capacitors will produce the hardened ones. So this is one of these nice ones. This is blazing. Next one after this would be necrotic, nicotic capacitors. The niotic, I don't know how to pronounce that to be dead honest with you. So, that, so we can keep upgrading these. And I've got some of these niotic capacitors already built. And I've also got some of the spirited ones as well. And the last ones of those, which we don't have at the moment, would be the uh, nitro uh, capacitors. So what does this do? Let's look here. I've got a solar panel basic. And with the solar panel basic, we can put it down on a chest. Here. So for example, let's just do this. Let's put the hopper against this chest. What it does, in fact, is it actually powers up the things that are inside here. And in, inside here, I've got some items which are not powered up. So these battery things over here. What we can then do is we can then put down a piece of cable. Let's go and get a piece of cable out of here. I think I don't need anything more than hardened. And I'm not even sure that 
hard and probably a bit on the strong side because the, the solar panel itself is only going to produce 12 FE per tick. This is a, actually an upgraded version of the basic one. This is basic. The starter one produces four. So it's three times four is 12, so that's fine. And that will actually produce power, but it's not producing power at the moment. So we're going to look at how to do that. So we've got different things. We also need, would like to make a player interface. Um, so we have all sorts of bits and pieces, and here is a basic player transmitter. And what this does is it allows you uh, to wirelessly transmit the power to you directly. For In fact, you can do it interdimensionally. So what we need is one of these player aerial pearls. I've actually I've got an aerial pearl here. What you have to do is you have to go and strike a zombie with it. Right-click a zombie. It actually absorbs the zombie like um, a captured thing. I've got down here a little area. In fact, I'm probably going to not wait to do this because I've already got one cord. And then this little area here, we've got different mobs. So at the moment there's a oh there is a zombie perfect. Let's let's go show you this show you this working. So we've got here's a zombie aerial pull. Here's a creeper on the creeper let's get rid of him. Now here's 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 the guy. Let's get him in my hand here. He should come to me when he sees me. And he should see me. Right, it's coming now. We can just right-click him like that. We've got him. And the skeleton, well, we can leave the skeleton as it is. But he'll come over here. Oh, didn't kill him in one. That's strange. Let's collect this stuff and press and go out. So now we have got a player aerial pearl. Fantastic. Didn't expect to do that as it happens. Uh, last time I tried it, made the video twice, it, one didn't spawn for ages. Anyway, this time we've got one, so we can at least make this. So look, the uses for this player aerial interface, we make this, it's the only one use is, we make this transmitter starter, and it gives you some information about it. Is an aerial pearl on a zombie or husk? So now we can click this, and then we've got the basic player one. We can then upgrade this one. It's one of these ones which you can upgrade. So this will make, from basic capacitors, will make an adi electric casing will make these basic ones and it's exactly the same for all of this stuff i'm not sure if i can go up another one let's have a look as i can let's go up as high as we can because the higher you go the faster this transmits i mean yeah so now we can make some blazing capacitors if we have got any we can make two yes we can make two of those and where did the where did the player interface go back into this chest oh, yes it did the uses of that Ah, oh, I've got to be in the right place, haven't I? Let's take it out of there again. Oh, completed the quest. And we can go up one more level, I think. And what it does is basically increases the maximum I.O. and the amount of power stored. So this one's now a neotic one, or niotic, is 50,000 F.E. per tick. And the and this one here was 20,000. So you usually see all the same stuff. Upgrades. Let's go and upgrade this one to the top level of what we can do at the moment. We can actually do the other one, necrotic as well, actually. The, the nitro one, which requires two of these nitro crystals. We could actually make four. Let's, let's push it up to the limit here. So I'm missing one of these dielectric rods, which I probably can make one from like this. I'll have to make some more, obviously. We use these up so fast, it's just ridiculous. So now we've got the top one. We also need a player card, a blank card here. Let's go to upstairs and install this thing. We can install it where we like, here. So first of all, we put, I've got things in my way I don't want. We put this down here. So it obviously is sensible. I'll probably want to change this cable as well, make this... Uh, nitro cable like that and then you look you get this interface as you can see this is charging up really quickly and here i've got this blank card the recipe for the blank card is just two of these the dielectric rods put in together so we then take this uh, card and right click it I shift right click it what have i got to do with this i thought i'd just I can't put it in here hold on a second i have to look in the book that's probably the best solution 
So let's go back to functional blocks player transmitter. So it charges up everything wirelessly. It should tell me about the card. Maybe it's not in here. Maybe I need to find the card. Items. Here we go. Binding card. Oh, yes, I didn't bind the card. I've made the blank card, but I haven't finished off. Let's go and do that. I've actually got everything ready, so let's have a look at the uses of this. And then we get this binding card. Now, it's not bound at the moment. It says right-click to bind. So we just right-click it and bind it. And then you'll see now it's bound. The other thing I want to do is I want to take this photo, this photoelectric paint. The uses of this one, shame with these, I probably pressed the wrong buttons, to make higher levels of these. Nope, let's look at something else. There is another use of this. But maybe you have to do it the other way around. Maybe look for what it actually does. So this one here, lens of ender. So they'll use a photoelectric plane on an endermite or endermite. The same is true for this one here, a binding card dimensional, using a binding card and an enderman or endermite. So let's go and do that. I'm going to take a second. As, well. as we already know, I've changed this area as well. In fact, I have actually got a, another trinket which I could enable, um, which makes me run very fast, but I don't like running very fast, I will be honest. You're actually going too fast. Oh, the chickens. Let's go up here and just grab an enderman. So all you need to do is right click an enderman. You don't have to fight him, just right click him and he'll be absorbed by the card like that. So, so now this is a dimensional bending binding card and we'll do a photoelectric cell. Come back, I want you. So this is now a... Has it gone to? That disappeared. Do you know, it disappeared on me last time as well. Let's press C just in case it's not. It shouldn't disappear. It should just, I don't think there's a chance of it disappearing. Well, or not. Anyway, I'll tell you what, I'll be back in a second with another card. So I made eight just to be set on the safe side, just in case it happens again. That one. So this time we did get the lens of Ender. Good. Um, this is interesting what this actually does. We'll have a look in a second at what this does. We can put this onto a solar panel. And now this solar panel, as we may have noticed, has got no power in it. And it's been running for a while. So what we do is right click this onto here. And it allows it to sit. It doesn't look any different. But this should start to be charging up. If I've actually set it up right. Because it should be able to work under blocks. It says it works under blocks. Oh, maybe it's not charging up in here. Maybe it's charging stuff up in the chest. Let's have a look. Yes, there you go. It's slow, but it's charging up 12 FE. So these batteries are now going to be charged up. So it's doing the, the first one first. So that's neat. I like that. It actually happens. Player interface. Um, oh, we haven't put the card in it yet. But you'll have a look at this jetpack now. The jetpack has charged up. It's got some 707, 7709, isn't it? Let's come along here and put this. Just double check this. So 7709600. So let's put the card into here. And now have a look at this. And you'll see this is charging up very fast. Not only does it charge up here, but it will also charge up in the end as well. Let's go and have a look. So we now have basically almost limitless power everywhere we're going. Let's go back home. Oh, I moved the bed. <laughs> I'm not sure that's in a great position. Uh, I will be honest with you. Because I made it, I want to make some more space for more seeds. There is one more item I'd like to make. I don't actually know what it does yet. And that's the ender gate. Uh, I need to make an energy discharger as well. Let's make one of these. There's a straightforward, tiny capacitors, dielectric pace, and a and I don't think, maybe this is we have to use, no, actually we might as well not make the simple one, we might as well make the, the nitro one, because it's one of these that doesn't upgrade. So we should be able to make some more of these capacitors too, fantastic, because it requires two. So we'll make this one. 
And what this does is discharges items. So for example, let's put this on here. I guess we can put this on here like that. And then come into this chest and take one of these out. So this has got, what, 40,000 in it at the moment. It's going to be charging up very fast because it's now in my hotbar. Let's put this into here. So it's now charge, taking the charge out of here, as you can see, and that's going into this discharger here. And then it's going to happen is that probably it's charging up these, and I guess it's charging up these a lot faster because they've got the discharge here. So it's just used as a means of charging stuff up. Let's take the battery with us again. I'm not going to be able to do much with it. <laughs> Whatever I do, it's going to be taking stuff in and out. So the last item I would have liked to have done here was the gate. I don't know what the ender gate does, so I'm going to make it, and then I'm going to have a look at it. I can't even see it, so let's look for gate. So we've got a starter gate, and I think these ones, so double check it if we got. Actually, they're not. They're the same thing. So what we would like to make is then four of these. So we need to make an ender core. So that's an eye of ender, a dielectric casing, and a bit and a tiny capacitor. We've got all of that. In fact, I think I've got that in here. So those are made up. I've got recipe for two. In fact, I was going. Yes, I already prepared a player interface in case there was no zombies around. So let's go up here and then make the ender core. So what we can do, and because we've got this set up for two, we can actually put into here uh, one of those and one of the tiny capacitors. And the last thing it needed for that, and I've forgotten what it needed. Um, Oh, it's an eye of ender. I should have an eye of ender with me, and I don't have one. Oh, okay, I'll go and get an eye of ender and be straight back again. So I've got the eye of ender. Now, I can't put this, I can put it in the hopper here, but it'll actually won't drop down, as you can see. So, but, so what we, all we need to do then is simply just take one of these and put the two here, and right-click one of these into here, and then that should start to work, as you can see. I can certainly upgrade these at energy energy rods here because that's like this process run faster I don't know what I get oh, made so we've now got our enter core that's a little bit of walking around to do this but let's make this up a gate it does have these different uses so we can make also end the ender cells. We'll cover that later on in another episode. But the one I wanted to make was the necrotic one, wasn't it? So we need these energy fill cables like this. So for that, we can use this one. Now, if I've got enough bits and pieces I haven't. Let's make one of some more of these because we need loads of these anyway. Um, put that one. I probably should make some more of these while I'm at it because you can do it that way as well. It's just a vertical recipe. How much have I got? Just two. Right, I'm going to make some more from here. Wrong place. Oh, this is actually quite useful. Coagulated blood, blood from a blood shroom, uh, which is on, which we get from sieving netherrack, if I'm right. So we've got 37 of these. Right, I'll tell you what, I'll just make this up quickly. Very easy to do. So we have a look at the uses of this, and we should make it like this, and we should make 12. So we can make four times 12. We'll do that, because there's 48 nitro crystals. Put those into here. So actually not too bad. And then I usually put this back into here for the next five so we don't fill up our inventory space with stuff we're not going to use. And then we want to make the cable, don't we? So we need to go this way and then we want to make the cable, which is presumably with this. So let's make one of these up. And then we can do that again. So of course the cable is quite handy to have. And I get 12 cables for doing this, this recipe, which is great. So now we should be able to make up the, the gate. So I'm missing obsidian. Okay, I don't have any obsidian there. Got plenty of obsidian in this chest, I think. 61, and yes, three stacks. Let's take a 61, we'll do fine. Let's put that into this chest here. So you can see the, the bits and pieces that we've got a non non power item. So we should be able to do this now, shouldn't we? Um, yeah, so we make four of these, and that should complete a quest. So now let's have a look. 
and go and have a look at the quests. So I've got mystical agriculture because I produced the nitro crystal seeds. They're insanium ones, so that's fine. We get an energy hopper nitro. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> we just made one of those, didn't we? So power. We've completed almost everything. So we completed the energy discharger, which gives us another seed. It's very nice as it happens, but we've got those already. We've completed the reactor, which gives us another obsidian boat. We've completed the player transmitter, which gives us some basic flux storage. I would actually like to look at flux networks next. We've completed the ender gate, which gives us a flux point. And I'll see that my items are dropping down here because I've got no space. Um, we could put those into here. What else can we do? Put this tiny capacitors and these into here as well. We don't need those with this. Press C. I've turned off my magnet. I don't know why I've turned off my magnet now because it's probably easier to leave it on all the time because it's going to be charged up all the, all the time, isn't it? So let's press turn it on. So if it doesn't matter what we do, it's going to just use that fuel. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. So until ne next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.